Good morning, everyone. I welcome all of you to St. Matthew's for this glorious third Sunday in Advent. And it is a glory ringer. They are doing a wonderful work in shower us with beautiful music. And as you can see in the back, the poinsettias are all placed. So as time goes by, it is added on to the beautiful decoration. And I also extend my welcome to those of you who join us through a virtual way, the Facebook and Zoom. And shall we all stand if you're able for the call to worship? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Today, we light the first, second, and third candles of our Advent wreath. The Lord will lead us in peace and joy. The mountains and hills break forth in his song. Shall we pray in unison together? God of joy, it is in your love 
that we find lasting joy. Keep us from seeking happiness in things that will not last. For we brought nothing into this world and cannot take nothing out of it. Teach us instead to find joy in the gift of your Son, who came into this world with nothing, yet gave us everything. Amen. concerning the assurance we have in Christ. And the God of peace sanctify you wholly, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do it. Amen. Amen. to our joys and concerns, 
We are asking for prayers for Re Reagan Ebal, Ray and Connie Denmark's granddaughter. She's having some medical issues, so if you could please keep her in your prayers. Uh, B. Scott is asking for prayers for her friend Patrick Kenny's family. They lost Patrick on 12-2, and he just had twins that are now two years old. So please keep the family in your prayers. Our joy, Mary, Mary Ann and Zoli's 90th birthday is December 22nd, this Friday. Wow, happy birthday. And B. Scott would like to share a joy, become a member of the Bowie Lions Club International to continue service to community abroad. And we also had a birthday Thursday. Isaac's birthday was Thursday. <laughs> Thank you. For all the names shared and joys and concern, we lift it up to you, to God. Shall we bow heads and pray? Eternal God of grace, you comfort those who mourn, heal the afflicted, deliver the captives, and bring hope to those who despair. You are a God who bends to the needs of your people. Surround them with the tenderness and lifts them out of despair. We give you thanks for sending us Jesus, who walked this earthly way and himself was tormented and afflicted with the pain. Through him, we can face those trials that, that await us and reach out to others with words of good cheer. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit who continually guides us, inspiring us to greater service on behalf of all your people. We are frail and prone to weakness, yet you remain our source of inspiration and strength. Clothe us in the garment of Christ's promised salvation and send us out to proclaim renewed hope to your people. Make us bold to witness to the truth of your righteousness and fearless in the face of our adversaries. Loving God, protect us from accusations against us and help us to counter charges intended to weaken our resolve. Keep firm our commitment to act on behalf of your justice so that the weak can themselves receive courage to stand. Garb us with the splendor of your spirit and renew our spiritual core and make us faithful in our study of scripture, disciplined in prayer, and wholly abandoned in our response to the gift that you give us. Gracious God, deliver us from the frenzied pace of the world about us, so that we may find time to reflect on your will for our lives. Arm us with your mercy and strengthen us by your grace, so that we can be truly free to obey Christ whom we serve. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Would you all stand again, if you're able, for the Hindi for scriptures. <laughs>
Good morning. Today's epistle reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now please all stand for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but he confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, well, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
Jesus on Christmas. In this week's message, I want you to go ahead and open something before Christmas. So the first week, I wanted you to open your, does anybody remember? Eyes. The next week, I ask you to open your? Ears. Ears, good. So what do you think it is this week? No. <laughs>
and Gloria Ringlers and Cora Bear for the wonderful music. So it's about seven days and seven nights till Christmas. So are you all waiting for Santa to come in a sleigh pulled by Rudolph and his friend? So according to the U.S. Department of Fish and Game, while both male and female reindeer grow antlers in the summer each year, male reindeer drop their antlers at the beginning of winter, usually late November to mid-December. Female reindeer, however, retain their antlers until after they give birth in the spring. Therefore, according to every historical rendition depicting Santa's reindeer, every single one of them, from Rudolph to Blitzen, had to be a female. <laughs> and the comment was added, included, we should have known this when they were able to find their ways. <laughs> So again, in our gospel reading today, we meet John the Baptizer. Last week we talked about him wearing camel's hair, eating locust and wild honey. If one of you sent me uh, the recipe for locust, I haven't tried it yet. So what does he say and what does he do? He was in the wilderness. So first thing that he said and did was, he was a witness to the light. But John the baptizer, his role was clear. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. In a world of darkness and confusion, John stood as a beacon pointing, not to himself, but pointing Christ, the true light. So when questioned about his identity, John the baptizer demonstrated remarkable humility. He knew exactly his role, that was not to be the Messiah, but to prepare the way for him. In a culture that often values a self-promotion, John's humility is a powerful reminder for us. So John's ministry took place in the wilderness, a place of testing, reflection, and encounter with God. As John raised his voice in the wilderness, he called us to be the voices in the wilderness of our time. Places of loneliness, despair, and longing. So we are invited to speak words of hope, to proclaim the coming of Christ, and to prepare others to receive Him. We are reminded that Advent is a season of preparation. Just as John prepared the way for the Lord, we too are called to prepare our hearts. So how do we do that? So how do we prepare the way for the Lord then? Mary, the mother of Jesus, gives us ideas in her song. A part of the next lectionary for today, even though we didn't read it, is Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. We call it Magnificat. That is Mary's song of praise. It starts, My soul magnifies the Lord. In other translations, it starts as, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Let me just read you again to remind your, I mean, refresh your memory. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. 
Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with the good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. <clears throat> Mary was given by the Holy Spirit insights far too profound for a simple teenage girl. She declared the impact that her son would have on the world. She announced, she announced three distinct revolutions that Jesus would instigate and activate. She spoke of these revolutions in the past tense, as if they had already happened. The world has been reeling ever since, under the influence of our revolutionary Lord. So the first revolution is spiritual. In verse 51 we read, He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Another translation renders it this way, the arrogance of heart and mind he has put to rout. So our problem these days is not that we deny our sin. We know our frailties, but deep down we believe we are so much better than most folks, so that God would be ashamed of himself not to let us in to heaven on good behavior. So the first revolution of Jesus was to banish pride and spiritual self-sufficiency. The none of us has any hope until we dump our trash at the foot of the cross. Second revolution of Jesus is social. In verse 52 we read, he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. God seems always to be overturning the world's social order. He helped a band of Hebrews, actually Hebrew slaves, to defeat an Egyptian army. He took a humble shepherd boy and made him Israel's greatest king. And when he sought a woman to be the mother of Messiah, he chose a lower class teenager from a hick town. Rank, caste, and class are always under attack when Jesus is around. Hear the word of Paul to the Galatian church. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jews or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. As some of you may remember, in 1957, when Rosa Parks refused to yield her bus seat to a white male, she ignited a revolution. God was on our side. God opposes every ruling system that devalues people or deprives them of life, liberty, and justice. How dare we value God's people differently based on skin pigmentation? When we treat somebody as being of lesser value because of race, that is a sin. Whether it takes the form of a realtor not wanting to sell a certain house to an African-American couple, telling a racist joke at a cocktail party, 
or an African-American politician calling white devils, Louis Farrakhan devaluing Jews. All of it is sin. Jesus delights in flipping the social order on its head, elevating the humble and putting down the pompous. The third revolution announced by Mary is economy. Verse 53, we read, He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. The Bible is tough on us who are rich concerning the rest of the world. We are on top 3% of the whole world population. Just simply living in this area, own a house, drive a car, able to pay the bills. Have you thought about it? Jesus said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eyes of, the, eyes of a needle than for someone rich to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't say being rich is bad. But just simply accumulating wealth and disregard others, that is bad. A Christian society is one in which no person dares to have too much while others have too little. One day, a poor girl came to the door of our Methodist founder, you know, the JW, not this JW, but John Wesley. It was a bitterly cold day, but she was wearing just a thin linen gown. She was shivering and her teeth were chattering. Wesley gave her what little money he had at the time. Later, he came back home and he looked around his room and saw his extra cloth and fashionable wig. He cried out, O oh Lord, have these been bought with the blood of the poor? Later, he just not gave tithe to God, but he gave Nine out of ten, he lived miserly all the rest of his life. If we die with lots of money in investments, leaving huge amounts to children who do not need it, while people are homeless, hungry, and in despair, God will surely call us to account. As the Bible said, God is good Heavenly Father. His focus this Christmas is on His children with the biggest problems and least resources. And He calls us, His other children, to lend a hand. This should be the big question for us. How can I help the poor in such a way that I build up their confidence and promote their independence. After all, when God became flesh, He chose to be the one of the Am Haaretz in Hebrew. My Hebrew is a little rusty. Rusty. That means the people of the land, the poor folks. If we do not identify with the poor, Jesus will not identify with us. And if we try to be a church without Jesus, we'll be nothing more than a religious, feel-good club for the pious and proud. Historians still consider the successful American Revolution as something of a miracle. George Washington and his little ragtag army had to fight the mighty British and their hired troops from Germany. Not only that, they had to fight against many Americans. In many states, there were more Tories, that is, pro-British Americans, than there was uh, rebels. The Jesus Revolution faces a similar problem. Some of Jesus' toughest opposition 
is within the church. Back then, as well as now. Many church members worship Jesus, but say in their hearts, don't make any big changes. I'm doing pretty well within the present system. Don't rock the boat. What about you? Concerning the Jesus revolution, are you a rebel or a Tory? Are you on the side of Jesus or of the world? Is your heart with Jesus or with your stocks and bonds? As we continue our Advent journey, let's take to heart the example of John the Baptizer. Let us be humble witnesses to the light of Christ, raising our voices in the wilderness of our world. And let us prepare the way for the Lord in our hearts and in our community and in our world so that we might truly celebrate the coming of Jesus, the joy and anticipation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, give us joy in your service. Make this Advent and Christmas season truly joyful as we prepare the way for you. Amen. And now, as we prepare our tithe and offerings, shall we bow heads and pray one more time? God of peace, in Christ you bring light to illumine the nations. He makes your will known to all who believe. We come in response to his call to us, seeking to follow and fulfill his commands. Accept the gifts we offer as symbols of our commitment. Sanctify them wholly, so that they may be used as you desire. Mold us and use us as instruments of your will. May all that we do be in accord with the gospel of him whom you have sent. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.
of the season. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jamina Archer Davies. I'm wearing the hat right now of chair of the staff, Pastor Parish Relations Committee. And what I'd like to do is make a small presentation and I'll call a few people to come up. And while you're doing that, I will prepare the, um, the envelopes. JW already here. Um, Isaac. Okay. Becky. Here. Melissa Howard, great. Don Jensen and Team Hewlin, Carol and Denny, please come up. <laughs> okay. While they're coming up, I just want to thank the congregation for being very, very generous again this year. Please have a bit. And uh, you know, we've been soliciting contributions to thank our hardworking staff, and you did deliver. So I know we're still expecting some more envelopes. So please feel free to keep on donating, um, uh, but we really thank you for your generosity and recognizing our staff. So, On behalf of St. Matthew's, um, the staff parish, um, pastor parish relations committee would like to recognize your excellent service to our church again in 2023. Our congregants are still donating funds, which will be divided equally and distributed to you as 2023 end of year gifts or bonuses. To date, we have collected about $3,000, which is expected to grow. In order to be IRS compliant this year, your individual gift amounts will be added to your December paychecks. So those envelopes do not contain checks. <laughs> but they serve as placeholders. <laughs> so your service to St. Matthews is highly appreciated by all of us, each and every one of us. And we thank you for being the backbone and heartbeat of our church. Without you, we will not be where we are today, so thank you. 
With our profound gratitude, we present you with these Christmas appreciation cards that will serve as placeholders for the bonus payments that you will receive later this year. Many, many thanks and blessings on behalf of the entire congregation. Thank you. Before, before you go away, hold on, hold on. So let me just say on behalf of the whole staff, that it has been a wonderful year. And uh, many of the staff, you don't see how they work, but I do. And they are very dedicated people. And we are not only working hard, but we as a team, a team of just wonderful, organically working together with a, like a well-oiled machine. So I'm happy to say that. And uh, this is such a wonderful gift. I'm really grateful for that. And I think I, I speak for whole staff team. And also my special thanks to Jemina and all SPRC members. If you're an SPRC member here today, would you stand just for a minute, please? <laughs> all right. Thank you very much for your service. Smith. I am co-chair of the Social Justice Committee, um, and I am here representing a few different committees this morning to ask for your some um, volunteer support. So St. Matthew's has been sponsoring a local single mother and her autistic son. Um, I'm loving JW's message this morning because I was able to jot some notes down. So, um, you know, following some guidance from his sermon this morning, we're in need of a volunteer to drive them to go shopping for some winter clothes and groceries to help build their confidence and promote independence. Um, so if you're able to spare a few hours in the coming weeks, maybe the next two weeks or so, um, to help out and provide transportation to them, we would greatly appreciate it. You can see me in the fellowship hall during coffee hour, or you can email socialjustice at stmatthews-bowie.org. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I encourage you to read the announcement section in the bulletin. There are a lot of stuff happening. And also today we have a coffee with a pastor. The last couple of weeks, I've been quite lonely. Nobody visited my office. So if you'd like to talk with me after the maybe brief coffee hour, you could bring your coffee and cake and sit with me and talk. You could ask any question except my credit card number and social security number. <laughs> and also, we do have a coffee hour today, so I invite you all. All right, would you all stand if you're able for closing him?
receive the benediction. We came this morning cold. Lord, you warmed us. We came this morning poor. Lord, you enriched us. We came this morning hungry. Lord, you filled us. We came this morning undeserving. Lord, you showed us mercy. Now, Lord, as we go, may your faithfulness and your mercy flow through us, filling the hungry and warming the hopeless. Go from this place, warmed by the Spirit's fire, and now go in peace. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.